Welcome everyone to the Russia County Board of Commissioners meeting uh, July 15th, or not July 15th, July 21st. Jeez, my date's mixed up. Okay, I'll uh, call the meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Bunting. Present. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Murphy. Here. Commissioner Lambrecht. Here. Okay. All please stand for the invocation. All your heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the day that you've given to us and the blessings therein. We ask, Father, for continued prayers for our military overseas and at home. We also ask, Father, prayers for our first responders, Father, and that the last many months have been through very perilous times, and, and we just ask that you continue to protect them. We ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Born and unborn. Thank you. Be seated. <laughs> Okay, any additions or deletions to our agenda? I would like to not have Dale in here any longer than he has to be, so without objection, I'll move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to protect you, buddy, from all the sickos. Uh, from K3 all the way up to uh, well, actually, right, right after, right before, right before the administration report. So, right. H H three will make it. Okay. Anything else? Move approval agenda. That's corrected. Or amended. Support. Moved and supported. And there are discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. All righty. Any com public comments? Anyone wish to make a public comment may do so at this time. Julie, Julie Spencer called and wanted to be put on. Is she on? Yeah, we got anybody on the line wants to come in? I do. Hi guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Hi. Greetings. Nice to see you again. Um, for the record, my name is Julie Spencer. I'm the administrator of the Gratiot Conservation District, local unit of government serving Gratiot County in the central Michigan area. I'm going to read a quick statement that I sent to the commissioners by email, but I wanted to read it out loud as part of the public meeting for anyone who hasn't seen my email. This morning, I attended a Michigan Environment Great Lakes and Energy webinar. Uh, the uh, acronym EGLE, uh, used to be called the D Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ, uh, giving instructions on applying for non-point source watershed management implementation grants to be used to clean the Pine River and its tributaries. I think we're in a good position to apply for the watershed grants based on what I already have in place, like the Partners and Approved Watershed Management Plan, which is this book, and the past successes that I've had with grant projects and the knowledge and skills on writing grant proposals, et cetera. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous emails, a big component of what we're missing is local match. So last week, I requested that the Gratiot County Commissioners uh, consider allocating a permanent yearly dollar amount of at least $75,000 to the Gratiot Conservation District to be used as general funding and local match. Based on what I've learned from this morning's webinar, that dollar amount will allow us to apply for approximately $214,285 from EGLE. And that is in addition to the other funding sources we're eligible to apply for, such as federal and state grants, uh, like with the Natural Resources Conservation Services, Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, et cetera. That is a great investment in our local dollars to be used to bring in outside funding to clean the Pine River and its tributaries. Without the local investment, we will be unable to apply for the outside funding and we will still have a very polluted river. 
without the local investment, we will have a 407 page watershed management instruction manual telling us how to clean the river sitting on a shelf accomplishing nothing and we will still have a very polluted river. With a permanent allocation, we will constantly know how much money, how much out, or in local funding we can, excuse me, how much outside funding we can bring in based on what we have local match because we will know how much we're going to have each, each year. We won't have to scramble to find local funding uh, we can do what we're good at doing, which is fixing environmental challenges rather than begging other organizations for funding. Some funders require match dollars to be available prior to a grant cycle and other funders require match dollars to be available during a grant cycle. With a permanent yearly allocation, we will have, we will not have to question if the funding is available during the required time frame because it will already be there. So as administrator of the Gratiot Conservation District, I'm asking that the Gratiot County uh, Commissioners honor my repeated request to allocate a permanent dollar amount to the Conservation District that we can count on annually of at least $75,000. I've provided a great deal of information in writing over the past few weeks, but if there is additional information you need to help you make this decision, please let me know, preferably in writing, and I will provide it back to you in writing so that we have a paper trail of it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, then. Uh, consideration of consent calendar, board minutes, communications, and recommendations. So moved. I'll second. All in support. All in favor, or uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, it's this time of the meeting, we're gonna have a little something for Dale here. So due to the COVID, Dale, I'm gonna ask you to sit back there and I'm gonna sit right here. <laughs> but um, the Board of Commissioners thought it very timely and we wanted to recognize you for all your efforts that you've been able to put into the county for the last few years. And uh, so we wanted to rec recognize this in, in the resolution that will be in the permanent record of the Trash County Board of Commissioners. I'll go ahead and read that. Whereas in June of 2017, Gratiot County found itself in immediate need for a building official and whereas certified, <clears throat> whereas individuals certified as building officials are in short supply, given the numerous requirements in order to qualify. And whereas Dale Sherman uh, possesses the qualifications for this position and, and thus certified as a building official. And whereas Dale Sherman agreed to step in and help the county for just a couple of weeks during this period. And whereas Dale Sherman recently completed almost three years uh, of service as a building official for Gratiot County. And whereas Dale Sherman's service allowed Gratiot County in the time to build a strong department of community service, which is now comprised of two building officials, strong administrative support, skilled erosion and soil conservation inspection services. And whereas Dale exemplifies the customer service value we hold for service delivery in Gratiot County. And whereas Dale exemplifies the value we place on service to our community and demonstrated by his involvement in numerous good works in the community, such as home builders with Clinton Gratiot Habitat for Humanity and whereas Dale Sherman does not know now how, how gee, I'll say it, does not know how to retire. And although he has en en ended his regular assistance to Gratiot De uh, County Department of Community Services, he continues to be involved in building projects in the county. Now, therefore, it be resolved. Gratiot County Board of Commissioners all county employees and members of our great community extend their deepest gratitude for Dale Sherman's service to our 
uh, county government and its citizens. Certified this day, I hereby certify that above is a true copy of the resolution adopted by the Gratiot County Board of Commissioners at regular meeting on July 21st, 2020 in the commissioner's meeting room of Gratiot County Courthouse pursuant to the re requiring statutory procedures. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, you want to throw that at me? I'll throw it in jail. Yeah, I'll throw it. No, <laughs> I'll add a few words and then um, no. I know Tony would like to add a few words. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, you, know, to you. I've been on a job here as uh, administrator for about five minutes when we found ourselves without a building official. And as, as indicated in the resolution, these things, uh, you know, these folks uh, so certified are in pretty short supply in this county. And Dale, as I now know, he is inclined to do, stepped up, and uh, it was. It was a couple of weeks, then it was a few weeks, and then it was, well, maybe for a few months. And, um, uh, but, you know, Dale really didn't save us. He has allowed us, he gave us the time to build the unit that we now have. We brought Tony Miller on board as a building inspector, allowed him to work for the two years it's necessary along with his other qualifications uh, to become a building official. And uh, I can say that uh, I think Dale has probably a stack of these resolutions of thanks, um, except now we know not to refer to them as, as retirement or to make any hint of it, as many of you know, Dale is working as a consultant on another project here in the county. So. Uh, I just, I just uh, didn't want to let this opportunity go by without just saying to you, Dale, you have a gratitude, my love, and respect, and I'm just so grateful to you. So, and uh, we've said nice things about you. The guy who actually worked with you, he probably has a couple of nasty things to say about you, but it's seen only very interesting. So, I want to say, I'm both correct in consideration of your family, but uh, but no, I and for him to stick around. And, and do what he did was huge for the was huge for the county, and for me personally to to have somebody there was starting not only a new job new career to have that guidance to have somebody there that uh, a lot of people to get that opportunity. So I just want to thank you for helping me out, steering me down the path. <laughs> you didn't say which path though. I've been for years and having this opportunity. I, not only did you help the time, you helped me too. Appreciate it. Put him up against the wall. That's where he needs to be. <laughs> I'd like to say one thing. I think you got a very good man right here to carry it on. So. Treat him right, he'll take care of you. Oh, treating him right, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a problem. Boom. You want to give Dale some of those cookies? Yeah. They're there, right there. Okay. Yeah. Probably could have just had Mike get a mug shot for you. Yeah, we bought cookies for everybody, but because of the virus, I'm going to let you just take a box home with you. I thought I'd let the, anybody make a grab a cookie when they leave. You want to see which one you want? There's two different. I'm not fussing, as you can see. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ken Dale. Dale and I got to work together when I was at the city and the same thing. Dale is just a tremendous person, and he's worked well with all the well all the public that needed a building official, and not only in the city but in the county. And we just can't thank him enough for stepping up. Appreciate it. Alrighty. All right. Thank you. Then I'm going to be part. So. Okay. Tracy, are you ready for the administrator's report? I am. Um, I, I will assure you that tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll be calling Dale to um, 
arrange a date that he'll come back to work for us. Um, we hate for him to run out of anything to do. But, uh, but speaking of that department, that's the uh, department formerly known as the permits department. It is now a very different work unit and I expect additional changes in the future, some of which we've been talking with you about and others that I'll uh, unroll at another time. But uh, the, the, that department has grown and evolved in all ways that are, all, are good. We wanna give you a tour of the building across the street here once they get just a little bit of finishing work uh, done. And we just have a, we just have a top notch staff over there now. Uh, we're on the verge of expanding some services and that's going to contribute to development in the community. And that really is the role and how we've been building this department. It is to serve the community in development efforts. Uh, I said to you in a presentation, gosh, it was probably almost a year ago now that once we got this department up and running that I wanted to change the name of it to more reflect uh, what they're doing, uh, what their role is, their mission is, and, and so forth. So um, I, I've changed the name of the department to the Department of Community Development. Uh, it says so on the sign in front of the building, and therefore uh, it is so. I'll get some uh, something on the web page kind of announcing this change of the, uh, of the unit. Uh, they may forever, quite frankly, in everyone's minds, be the permits department. But I want to reflect in its name and to all of you, to this board, that uh, the role of that department is to aid this community in development uh, and to serve along with other entities in our county that are working on those issues. Next, um, we received notice last Thursday that FEMA has approved the county's hazard mitigation plan. Uh, that's the project that Dan Warden worked on tirelessly. He came to you and reported on that project once or twice. Um, that work was aided by contractor Bill Ernat. Uh, Dan developed it uh, along with a very large work group. Uh, you approved it and FEMA has now given its blessing. So that's another step on that path. Um, our meeting to, believe it or not, it's contract negotiation time. Our meeting to look at health insurance proposals for the next fiscal year is scheduled for this Friday afternoon. Uh, we have reason to believe that the increases this year, the cost increases are gonna be very, very modest, very, very small. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed about that. Um, our first negotiation session actually is scheduled for 10 a.m. August 11th, and that is with GELC. We are also due to negotiate this year with TPOAM, but I have not received a notice uh, yet from their representative that they wish to do so. Um, I sent along to each of you, if you didn't know, just information that the governor has extended her order allowing our meetings to continue via Zoom. Um, frankly, th it, this barely matters for our group, uh, but her her waiver extends uh, certain restrictions that would otherwise be in effect. And those restrictions generally are that a quorum, at least a quorum must be physically present, which would mean that three of you would have to be physically present as opposed to one or uh, all of you, uh, as opposed to all of you uh, being on uh, Zoom or appearing electronically. So um, if you, each of you wish to, um, uh, not participate in person, we still have the waiver of the restrictions under the um, Open Meetings Act. Um, well, the other benefit, of course, is uh, although not really related to the governor's executive order, uh, we are live streaming the, these meetings and then they can be replayed later on YouTube. Um, I'm hearing from a number of folks, uh, you know, handful, uh, but more than ever before, that uh, folks really are going back and looking at these meetings. So um, I think it's a wonderful development and a way to expand uh, at least awareness, it, it, awareness, if not participation in these meetings. So um, yeah, that's what I have for this evening. Okay, thank you. Are there any particular questions for Tracy? Okay. Commissioner's committee reports, Chuck. Uh, let's see, uh, Seville Township finally has a date in September. I can't remember the exact date. Yeah, that they're gonna be meeting with the Eagle people. Uh, Pine River is working on, they formed, a, I think you call it a consortium 
uh, to uh, do dialeride services for Pine River, St. Louis, and Ithaca. And I believe they're putting a, a millage proposal on the ballot for November. And uh, we have a health, uh, health council, a health board meeting tomorrow. So that's about all I have. Tim. First of all, I apologize. I'm going to have to exit out at about 5.30 uh, of the meeting. So if you see me disappear and, and George knows, so he's ready to take over as finance chair if need be, but it's, it's nothing that anyone said. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's just a prior commitment I chaired with George. We're meeting some friends that we actually worked with when I worked up here 31 years ago. We worked together and I think we've seen them in person actually, like we haven't seen each other, our families for 15 years. So this will be fun. Um, the, uh, we had a couple meetings, uh, the airport authority did meet, uh, they voted unanimously to create an ad hoc committee that will make a recommendation to us as to what they see, what they would like to see in terms of an organizational structure with a larger role being played by the county. Um, that committee consists of Mark Taylor, John Lapine, myself, uh, Tracy, Jim Wheeler, Matt School and Eric Ripley. I believe that's everyone. And we're meeting in a couple weeks. So um, the, there was pretty strong agreement that, you know, we're moving in the right direction. The, the study that we contracted, I think was really helpful for everyone. And it made everyone also recognize that, you know, we, we probably need something different than what we have, especially since, you know, part of what drove this was a couple of the members of the authority <laughs> You know, asking to withdraw from the authority. So we'll be meeting in a couple of weeks, and I'm sure we'll have some some good updates in terms of you know trying to get some input from <coughs> people who've been you know managing the airport, like or you know kind of kind of being the fiduciary, which is you know Eric, but also some of the users and representatives of the business community. Um, we had a, oh, I had an Arcata Township meeting. They're looking at a little different uh, way of, of providing fire to their folks, you know, Arcata Township is close to Ithaca and close to Alma, and there's uh, work on an authority. They've also got some ongoing blight issues out by um, the corner of, of um, you know, Business 127 and State Road, you know, coming into to Alma. If that's actually Arcata Township, I know it's a concern to Elma because you know that's kind of the entrance to the city if you're coming out highway and and there's a couple properties one in particular out there that's just uh you know pretty and and it affects the local businesses there's you know there's a couple businesses right there on that corner um, that are concerned and so so they're working on that you know we've heard this before you know blight is is just an issue and then uh, parks and rec met and of course for the parks the the big um, the big topic is you know we've got a millage vote in the August uh, primary election. And so, you know, everyone vote yes. And, and, you know, the language is the language that we approved as a board, you know, which will create this uh, opportunity, this vehicle for funding for the municipalities that many of us had, you know, wanted to, to get included in the next millage. And so, so that's what I got. Okay, thank you. Sam? Um, had a couple, three meetings uh, since we last met. Um, North Shade and uh, New Haven got, got towers headed up. They got about, I think they said last night, eight or nine completed. Um, got all the pads in for over a hundred. Um, they're all backfilled. The building, they're building consumers also, is not part of the tower project, but it's gonna be related to the power, tower project. They're building a building in uh, Fulton Township along 57. And uh, they get the framing up of that building, so that's going along well. Um, New York Township, they're talking about uh, part of that board, that fire authority board. Uh, they're going to be involved in that with the Ithaca and all of that. So that's about it. They're all worried about uh, funding from the state, but we all are. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I told them. <laughs> all are. Yeah. Jen? Um, I had a meeting with Bethany Township and Wheeler the same night. And I spent, I had to split my time up. And one of the things that I did was take the paperwork that um, I was given from Julie mm -hmm. that came through the internet or the email. Mm -hmm. And I wanted each 
township to uh, have a copy of it. So, and basically they were short meetings anyway for both meetings. Um, they're into farming and short meetings and trying to also get ready for the election in, in um, August. I also had a meeting with MSU on Zoom and um, it was kind of funny because it was, I kept thinking I wasn't on and it was a slide. So it was something real different than what I've been doing mm -hmm. on Zoom. And uh, you could hear them, but you couldn't see anybody. Mm -hmm. And, but anyway, there was a slide and it was, they're just trying, they are, they're not trying, they're doing uh, special things this summer with, with different groups um, that has to do with agriculture, like things that might've been through the fair and stuff like that. So anyway, I, they were looking for volunteers to do things. I did not volunteer. I had my hands full with a lot of activity things that's going on right now anyway. So that was the only, and did I tell you, did I mention NNR the last time? Fogel Medical Response? We had a um, meeting with them. Uh, yes. That was that was after our first meeting. So okay, no. that's what I was thinking it was. Okay. Okay, so that was the only things that I had. Okay. Very good. Uh, the only meeting that I've had to go to, well, went to, is North Star Township. Um, we talked about several issues. We met outside in their gazebo, which is nice because you're outside. But they, one of the trustees lives right next door. It's a little story. He has goats. And they were more entertaining than the, the meeting was. <laughs> <laughs> and one, he's got one little goat. I said, you have problems keeping them goats in? And he said, only one. And you watch him, and he would go to the corner and he would climb that fence. Down he'd go. <laughs> and he, he was just a lot of fun. But anyway, that's just my little story. Uh, but we're working with uh, four different townships currently, uh, putting a, a common blade ordinance in. We're going to call it a pilot program. And we're going to try to help them deal with their blight issues. We find that with our economy, the way it's been, and people had, remember back when houses were cheap, people bought a lot of houses and they bought them in the country cheap and they're renting them out. Well, they're what I call absentee landlords. They don't even live in this county. Some of them live all the way down by Detroit. They own houses here and they don't watch them. And so, when you're renting your house out and you're renting it fairly cheap, the garbage pick, you know, they oh, just all sorts of problems happen. And that's what they're struggling with right now is those problems. And so hopefully we can get them together and, and, and we can start through that pilot project. And if that pilot project works out, you know, it could be great things for a lot of other people too. So the things that we work for. And so, um, just had a meeting, a finance uh, meeting with the Board of Health for our budget next year. So people are sending that to the, uh, the full board tomorrow. That'll be at Stanton. Um, other than that, I think we're all, all set. Okay. <clears throat> Matt, you're up. Yeah, there he is. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Excellent. So tonight I just wanted to come before the board and discuss some quotes that I'd received from for a uh, capital improvement project that we had budgeted for this year. It is a virtual server that we intend to replace upstairs in our equipment closet. And this is our kind of our biggest server. It runs most of our services here at the county. I don't think there's a single employee that doesn't um, make use of it here at the county. And the three quotes that I received, one was from IT Wright, one was from a company called CMS Communications, and the other one was a server directly from Dell, or a quote directly from Dell. The Dell quote actually came in uh, as the lowest for the hardware cost. Um, one thing that I would like to do though is uh, IT Wright had quoted out um, labor for installing it. Under our current contract with IT Wright, 
There's a couple of things that it does not cover. One of those things is replacing servers just because they're very big projects that kind of take a lot of time to do from beginning to end. So we do have to pay for labor for this project. So what I would like to do with the board's approval would be to purchase the hardware from Dell because the Dell quote was the lowest hardware wise, but go ahead and um, have IT right do the installation work for it. Uh, I didn't get quotes from additional vendors for the installation work alone, only because most places don't like to um, just quote out the labor, but IT right was okay with that as long as we met the, uh, as long as that I, as, <laughs> as long as that we uh, kind of agreed on the specs for the server and kind of, and that type of thing. So, uh, that's what I would like to do. Um, in my memo, I mentioned a couple of other managed IT service providers that uh, that I would have typically bid out to, but the last few quotes that I'd received for, from them, they were uh, actually higher than IT right labor wise. One was NetSource One, which is a vendor that we used to use quite a bit in the past. Um, they Their quotes typically come in at 30% higher for the labor and then um, applied imaging. They are a print vendor now. They also do manage service provider work, IT work. And the last time I had gotten a quote from them, it was it was even more than 30% higher than IT rights for the labor portion of it. Um, so yeah, I'd like to answer any questions if anyone has any. This is, uh, this is money that was budgeted for this fiscal year. Matt, do you see an advantage uh, to having the server work be done by the vendor that knows our systems very, very well? Can you yeah, comment we have a, on that? Sure. We have a very good relationship with IT, right? Um, they do know our systems the best. They have uh, been kind of standardizing us to kind of meet the meet the specs of other uh, municipalities and counties that they work with and but it's it's a unique relationship i think one of the reasons that my position exists is so that we're just not uh, we kind of set things up here in a way that's best for grasha county and i i think it right would be best for grasha county thank you Man, I have a question. I'm just uh, so. What would be? I mean, you look at you look at IT rights. First of all, you, I don't recall what we had in the budget for this. Are we under budget on this for this project, or are we we right at what we budgeted? Or for this virtual server project, so the capital improvement amount that we had put down on the budget for this was uh, let's see here, it was thirty five thousand dollars total, and. So, you know, when you add the cost of the Dell hardware and the cost of the IT right labor, it would be around $30,000. So we would be $5,000 under what we had uh, budgeted for. Right, IT right's gonna install for 5,700, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. So when you look at that, I mean, it's 36.4, uh, or it's, um, yeah, 36.4. Um, is there any difference in equipment that IT right has at, at 30,000? I mean, is this 30,000 right. from IT right? Is that, is that, that the equipment and the installation? The $30,000 bid from IT right is the equipment and the installation cost. The equipment that IT right had bid out is the specs are equivalent, but the, uh, support contract as well as uh, kind of the name brand of the equipment is better on Dell side. Uh, we do have a Dell Vertex server that we currently use now. And in my opinion, the, the brand of equipment that IT right quoted out is a little, uh, it doesn't, it's not exactly the same as far as uh, kind of the the support that you would receive from it. Uh, 
Dell, Dell equipment is pretty industry standard, whereas the Intel system that they quoted out, it's not really a name brand system. So I feel like if we needed components for it, or if we had to get it serviced, or if we had to do research on the, how to solve an issue with it, the, we're going to e more easily be able to do that with the Dell equipment than the Intel equipment. Uh, I don't have any problem with doing it however you want to do it. Um, I just want to tell you that I'm, I've been here probably, I don't know, five, six years now and, and the, the uh, IT stuff around here and, and has just gotten tons better as far as these buildings and everything connected. And, and so I just think you're the guy that knows more about this. I don't know if you're installing one of these or two of these or what they are, but Mm -hmm. that you think what we need and you're the guy that we're counting on to do it i mean i'd make that motion to go with your recommendation thanks i appreciate that one uh, one other thing i do want to mention really quick is that the uh the old server the server that we're using right now wouldn't uh, necessarily go out of commission what we intend to do is use it as a, a lifeboat server in case we have any issues down the road we'll be able to keep it powered on keep it set up and be able to move services to it in case we need it. So it's not like it's just going into a scrap pile somewhere. We do intend to continue to make use out of the old equipment. And with that contract with IT Rec, we have some type of backup plan with them also, don't we? We're storing this somewhere offsite or something, you know, as I recall you mentioned. Yeah, we do do offsite storage on that central dispatch right now. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, uh, just a comment. <laughs> Getting this. Just a comment to follow up. Sam, can, you actually kind of anticipated my comment. You know, I was actually going to compliment you, Matt, for breaking out that bid. You know, I, I think. You know, Tim, if you can hear me, you're breaking out. Translate it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the video and hope that we can hear him a little bit better. I may have been gone okay. for 16 years, but I still got you for him. <laughs> what, what he's saying is that Matt's doing such an excellent job that he'd really like to see the board double his salary. I'm reading his <laughs> lips. I'm reading his <laughs> lips, and that's, that's word for word what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Can, can you hear me now? See. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it, can't see you, but I'm we up, hear you. I'm up in you know up in the UP. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, so there's a you know there's a there's a hamster on a wheel. There's a ham wheel. You know you know running on that thing as fast as it can. You know. To, <laughs> oh my. to get our server up to speed. Sam anticipated actually, Sam's comment kind of anticipated a comment I was going to make, and that is, you know, I think our experience with IT Right and other organizations that I'm familiar with have been really happy with IT Right service. But I, I have noticed asked, and, and this came up with the uh, Foundation. About experience that you know all of us had recommended on the community foundation board that that we use right there um, but when we bid for service the thing that really stuck out at me the hardware was expensive you know i mean and, and it was things like you know it was things that you know you can kind of shop fairly easily and I, it just seems to me that when i've seen their bids it's like you buy the equipment and you're buying it at sticker price well you know, you're buying from Dell, well, Dell's making it. And so I just, I, I, I compliment you, Matt, for again, you know, kind of looking at the whole picture and, and saving us some money. I think, you know, you're getting us a better service for Echo, you know, Sam's concerns, you're right. If, if, if one of these other, you know, eating service providers, even off a cheaper bid, it would have to be a lot cheaper before I, Let's have them do, do you know, some tech service for us when, you know, when IT Red's done such a good job and knows our system. And so to you, Matt, for, you know, pulling together what I think is the best package for, for us and, you know, the, the best package for the taxpayers.
You done? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but we got the point. Got but we couldn't hear you most of the time. <laughs> you're on a time thing after so many minutes. You're, well, it's, you're at the end of the world called Marquette. Yeah, I think it's my it's my cheap hotel. It's my cheap hotel internet. <laughs> That's okay. We're glad to have you. <laughs> yes, I'm saying yes. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's, okay, we have a we have a, a move and a support. We have any other discussion? Having heard none, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. That's you, Angie. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Bunty. Yes. Commissioner Lambrick. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Bailey. Yes. You should say yep. <laughs> I did that because of the audio problems. I just want to make sure everybody got on the record. Okay, Matt. Once again, a great job. Oh, doesn't that what a you persist? Yep. yep. Thank yep. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, um, area agency. It's in your packet. There was nothing to vote on. It was just more information. If we had a consider a problem with it, we could have discussed it, but I'll just say it, put it out there. Has anybody got a problem with it? It's a lot of information for the agency to do with the Commission on Aging. Uh, I, re Jen, I read this by Jen Cook. She has no problem with it. So. Okay. You know. Okay, because part of it doesn't show up. There's Right, it's just, yeah. It's, well, I'm not going to go on to it. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Consideration of uh, appointments for one partial term ending 331-2020 and one another partial term ending 321-2020. Okay, and that would be, I get my paperwork to work here. Uh, Catherine Bollinger, she's a lawyer out of Parrington. And I believe part of the Elmo Public Safety Department. Uh, Overla Ken, Kendra, or it must be Kendra Overla, yeah, is just the way I read it. Kendra Overla, which is, uh, is she the chief? Yes. Is she the chief? Yeah, okay, she's the chief of police uh, for those two terms. She got recommendations from uh, there was another one. There's another one. Thomas Seren, too. So you've got three people, but you. Oh, well, we got. Did, didn't. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Didn't Michelle only put in two? One for Thomas and one for Kendra. She's, she sent two recommendations. Okay. Oh, there we go. I didn't go down far enough. Okay. Uh, Thomas Shireen. She sent. She sent one in for Thomas and one for. Uh, Kendra. Okay. Well, if she's that's what she's recommending. That's what I would recommend to the board then. Okay. Okay. I'll so move. So move that. Okay. Did we have a support? Support. Board supported. Any yeah, other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carried. Aye. Okay. Okay, we got down to unfinished business. We've got the mirrors. Uh, and I think we've got that settled. So Terry's here. Uh, should be in your packet. If I, oh, it's on my hand. Okay, human resource. Okay, there we go. And either Tracy or Terry, run us through quickly what you've discovered and what you recommend. I have discovered uh, you requested a survey that I sent out yep. at your last meeting. You requested it, and I sent it out to all of the employees, not just the ones who currently participate in the nationwide 457. Uh, the survey shows how many people, and there was none that were opposed to it, to the transfer from nationwide 
to the MERS. Okay, so at the end of the survey, we did not have any dissents. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Also in your packet, you received a comparison. Yep. Is there any questions? Is it mentioned somewhere in here that that is the result? I just didn't see it for the record that there was, it was in the 34 to nothing. Yeah, it's just 34 currently enrolled. Packet results mentioned in survey. Yeah, in the, in the bottom, the very bottom of the memo, all employees that responded are in favor of the transfer. Okay. All right. I missed that line. Very good. Okay. Any other questions? Just real quick, Terry, when you look at the, the survey, um, the fourth question there, uh, receive information about the transfer. There, it looks like 29 people responded. Yes. And so we had uh, 15, I mean, it's just, it's not overwhelming. I think it's 15 said, okay, let's move it. You know, I don't, but. But at the end of the day, nobody said they didn't want to move it. Yeah, but can you, I don't think you can move. Can you move someone's, um, what is it, 457 or whatever it is over to another company? Can you move from one company to another company, someone's yes. investment without their approval? Yes. You can? can uh, but I have everyone's approval. Right, or, yep, we can do that. Okay. Yep, we're all set. All we gotta do is make a motion. So move. Support. Move supported. Any other discussion? Ask the clerk, call the roll. Is this assigned the agreement and the resolution? Mm -hmm. Yep. All one. Commissioner Bunting. Yes. Commissioner Everett. Yes. Commissioner Murphy. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Tim, could you say that one more time, please? Yeah. Good. I want to make sure. Not at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Come. Don't try it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, gosh. Oh. Electronic stuff is fun, isn't it? Okay, I'll ask to, uh, for a recess to go in the finance meeting. So moved. I'll second it. I'm supported. Third call roll. Yes. Okay. Tim, if you don't mind, because of the audio that we're having problems with, I'll just go ahead and conduct the finance meeting. Please do. Thank you. Yeah, so I think it's, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is that wrong? No, it's eight, two or three strings. Please do. Go to go to supper with your friends. We <laughs> you're excused. Oh, that's right. He's gonna leave. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's good going. to see everyone. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Tim. Wait a minute. Are you leaving because you're going to supper? Or is yeah, it we're emergency. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Have a great vacation, dude. Thanks. Thanks, right. everyone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, modern technology. Okay. We'll call a finance committee meeting to order. Uh, financial administrators report. He's on the screen. Good evening, board. Uh, first up, 
we have for you are our June 30th cash balances, which I provided for you. Um, we tend to, we're, we're following our, our trends that we've seen in the past. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll give you a moment to look that over. Everybody all set or you're still good? Yeah. All right, we're all set. Okay. Uh, next up, we have um, the bills that were paid in the month of June, uh, provided to you in the two formats. For those that like the overview of $10,000 checks and above, and then we follow that up with the entire check register. Um, I will give you a moment to look that over and ask any questions that you would like to ask about the bills. Green that go, man. Can I ask a question on page seven, or am I going too far ahead? No, we're not there yet. Okay. Almost there. Okay. Hurry up. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jan, ask your question. Okay, on page seven, you got High Point Duty Bank. Where's that at? What is the dollar amount? I don't have the same number. 991 and 995. Where do you see that? Oh, I see it right here. 315,000 total. I had 334000 or no, 234138 dollars I just want to know where that bank is. Where? High Point, High, yeah, High Point Community Bank. Is this in yeah. my uh, oh, checks over 10000 Yeah, well, no, it's down in number the, seven. The last report. Hey, I got a feeling it's the, it's the drain check. Um, this was the month that a whole bunch of uh, bond payments were made. So I'm going to, I am certain that it was one of those. Well, it says right there. But I'd have to, I'd have to Google um, the bank and that's a, that's a payment that the treasurer makes. Yeah, that would be out of fund 851. So it's a bond payment? Yes, it'd be a bond payment for um, trains. That's the, that's the deal. So the question I'm asking is High Point Community Bank, is that in the Michigan or in the United States? It says Hastings, Michigan. I just Googled it. It's where? Hastings, Michigan. Hastings? Okay, thank you. It's a bond payment. And you're saying those are both drain debts then? Yeah, drain. Correct. That's a drain, okay. Yeah, I figured that's what that big, we had a great big payment to the drain debt, so I think that's where it went. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. And did we borrow more money from Joanne Lee? I see we constantly owe her money. Are we almost done paying her off? Never, no, you'll never pay her money. Oh, well, okay. no, no, that's that's been on there for 20 years, then maybe more. That's that's been something we that she constantly it's a revolving loan fund, if you will. Correct. We borrow it from her. We pay it back. We borrow it from her. It's like a revolving. So we just don't see when we borrow it. We don't have the. Yeah, you don't have that part of it. Yeah. Those would be um, placed in the communications portion of your when when a when Drains takes out a new loan, they they put that loan document and communications to the board. <clears throat>
Okay, I have another question on page eight. And it's U.S. Bank Equipment Finance. What would that be for? That is um, the company that collects the money for our applied imaging contract. They, they, they source out, applied imaging sources out billing. Oh, okay. Okay, on page nine, what is CMHA-CEI? That is a company that provides uh, services to through the child care fund for um, juveniles. Oh, okay, that's thank a, you. That's a, you'll be signing a contract for them probably one, in one of your meetings next month when Jennifer okay. brings all the child care fund information to you. And then here's another one, MyCom Care, MyCom County Care Network. What would that be? I'm gonna have to look that one up. And on page 10, underground security company. Yeah. Uh, the Montcalm, they provide uh, some sort of therapy, therapeutic services through the court systems. Okay. And the underground, um, I don't remember exactly what you said, but I believe the clerk's office use either register deeds or clerk's office uses them for um, microfilm storage. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's underground. Okay. Yep. Data. Oh, I think it's an old salt mine. Oh, old salt okay. mine in Colorado. Oh, and I have a... I'm sorry. <laughs> I have another one here. Rainbow Inn. I've been to Rainbow Inn. Isn't that a bar? It is. Huh. That'd be a restitution okay. payment. That's what? Restitution through the courts. Somebody committed... a and then when they pay the tax, booking into or something back through the clerk's office and then back. Oh, okay. Oh, I saw that there and I said, I know what you guys are doing now after hours. Okay. No question of that portion. I did have one more question. I see Bill Dilsa's name on here for $50. What would that be for? Um, I don't know exactly. There's a good chance that he's part committee. of the committee though. Oh, you know what? Maybe he committee. he's on some kind of committee. In the here. parks? Parks or zoning or somebody. Probably even the courts. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Okay. If that's it for the bills, I will let you move on through onto the investments, receipts, and transfers. <coughs> we have Michelle on the line. Michelle indicated she's ill and not able to attend tonight. Okay. Well, there's not a lot of questions to ask. <laughs> Looks like we're seeing the lower interest rates on that chemical bank one point one five. Yeah. 
Well, when 0.15 is above the loss on the gun, isn't it, Chuck? Yeah. Yeah. That's why do we have it there? Let's move. Oh, it's just April. Yep. Okay. So we're seeing what we're going to be maybe getting in the future. In the future. Yeah. Got to remember, Chemical Bank was sold. Yeah. Well, I was just looking at the lower interest rate. Well, I would think that would probably have something to do with it. They're going to read, evaluate their. Yeah, they are making major changes because I have my account there and. I think it's still there anyway. Well, we don't have a lot of questions and answers there. So continue on to other financial business goals and objectives down on page 21. Okay, that's what I got. So what this attachment here is, is um, this is administration's draft of the goals and objectives for the budget, for putting together the budget for fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21. Um, so what we did is we modified them for, for the current atmosphere, updated it for the progress that we've made during our current year. And um, I'm looking for feedback from the board. Um, obviously we have all the way up until September, uh, I believe, September 22nd is the last meeting of the fiscal year, which we would have to have our budget passed then, but I'm shooting for September 8th to present the budget in full to you to be passed. So uh, if you want to look over these, if you want to talk about any of them, if you have suggestions, let me know. Uh, just running through the issues real quick. We're looking for an, another clean audit report. We're looking at IT security upgrades, continued staff professional development, continued progress on building maintenance and upgrades, health and safety of employees and the public during business with the county, economic development, airport sustainability, sustainability and productive use of landfill property. Um, if any of those would like to talk about more or if you have other ideas on how our, our budget should be objectified and goals that we have for the next year, this is opportunity for discussion amongst the board. Because I previously looked this over, um, you know, it's, you, you see something different each time you look at it, but um, under economic development, I would like to add uh, that we support new wind projects, but also solar projects. Uh, you know, once we get done, once we've saturated this county with uh, wind projects, and even before that, I, I think that we might want to be talking about solar projects. Uh, so I would like to add that. So I add that concept uh, for discussion. Yeah, I'd like to know more about it too. Tracy, are we anywhere with the solar project uh, on the landfill? No, no. The uh, placement of the um, oh the substation seems to be the problem, even though it's within a mile or you know, within a mile or so. That seems to be um, uh, problematic in terms of its distance. I haven't given up, but um, it's uh, it's hit that major snag. Are you talking to like one solar company or is this solar in general or? I'm talking about uh, promoting solar even for uh, homes in the country, looking at solar panels uh, to increase efficiency even on the county buildings. Um, uh, uh, promoting this, uh, we, we've already got the PACE program which helps to encourage um, uh, well, it, it, it offers some of our businesses the opportunity to um, uh, utilize alternative energy sources and um, you know, have some advantages in doing that. So what this would do is it, we would work with uh, Jim Wheeler, of course, in um, giving him another tool in the toolbox to talk about this county as being uh, open and receptive to these kinds of projects, but I would also get our permit staff now, staff in the Office of Community Development, uh, some training in how to uh, inspect these kinds of projects. So um, that's 
uh, not very, uh, not a very specific response, but it's just, you know, um, we would want to develop that more specifically over time. I guess really my question is, I understand the concept of it. Um, you're talking like putting solar onto the landfill. Are you talking to like John Doe Solar Company? You know, I'm looking at Moncom County. Um, there's, and I don't know who the solar company is, but they've come in and bought a couple farms that I know that are going to put a project in. I mean, bought these guys' cows and their tractors and tearing their houses down and buying five, 600 acres and put a solar farm in on this stuff. And so I didn't know if there's different companies out there that are doing this or is it just solar in general or is it? Sam, you know, what a, a goals and objectives uh, chart does is it gives uh, all of us some guidance and certainly me some guidance on how you folks might want me to be spending my time and just what the, you know, the overall goals of the board are. Um, you're, you're looking for specifics that I frankly don't have. Yeah, the landfill was a pretty specific project and we've hit a snag with that. There are certainly other things we could look at. I mean, for example, we could take our county farmland and stop farming it and put a great big old solar farm up there. You know, that's not something I'm proposing to you, but if this, uh, if looking more carefully at solar is uh, a goal or an objective of this board, then, you know, I can begin to develop those things. Um, George, were you looking at some solar direction here? Um, anything that you would add well, to that? You know, one of the big things that, that I that I know is the FAA has relieved has relieved airports from having solar panels. And one of the things that we can look at, and, and that would be more attractive to a company wanting to put in a large tract of solar panels would possibly be solar panels at the airport and surrounding farmland. I mean, you tell a farmer that he can get more money for putting solar panels into planting crops, uh, you might listen to it. So I don't know, just, just those ideas, different tracts of land, uh, but being prepared, like uh, Sam just mentioned over in Montcalm, if someone's doing it over there with farmland, then are we prepared in this county to go ahead and be able to make something like that happen, if that happens, you know, you've got to you've got to have preparation for those things. So I guess, I guess maybe you're missing my question, or maybe I'm not asking the right question. How do you call a solar company? I mean, you just call up ABC Solar Company and say, "We've got this track of land that's a landfill. Mm -hmm. Could you come and look at it?" And then they say that the the the, the collecting station is too far away. I mean, we have somebody in mind we've talked to about this project or is this, we just talking in general about this project? I mean, it depends on the project, Sam. You know, what we do with the landfill is we send out an RFP. Yeah, you hear you, Tracy. I'm sorry. Yeah, you. There you go. Couldn't hear uh, you. Okay. Uh, I'm not really, Sam, it depends uh, on the project. What we did with uh, the landfill uh, was that we sent out an RFP, and not once, but twice. Um, we had the specifications of the project, the size of the property, the you know map showing the location of the station. So that's how we did that. Us. I can't hear you, I'm sorry? Those companies contacted us through an RFP then. Well, we got no responses to our RFP, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but in, but in developing the RFP, we worked with, uh, um, you know, I don't want to name names, but there were a couple of people I called that were able to provide some direction. We had legal counsel um, help draft the RFP. Uh, you know, uh, I was speaking with the folks at the Michigan Land Bank Trust, and I, I feel like I had done these reports to you along the way, but, you know, it's been a while, so I understand. But so, you know, I, I look for guidance where I can find it. Uh, I was on the phone once along with the folks over at Greater Gratiot with uh, a company that, oh, a couple of years ago had expressed some interest in the landfill project. Uh, then the regulatory environment uh, became undesirable. That had then gotten resolved. So we called them back up. Uh, in that period of time, that company had merged with another company, you know, so it's it's a... And that's a, a long and frankly uninteresting story, except to say that as we have these contacts, we certainly utilize them and get the best advice we can and 
on that one, we were kind of trying to sell the project to them, uh, truth, be, truth be known. So depends on the project. If, if we're gonna put uh, solar panels uh, on the top of this courthouse, uh, I think I'll be looking at uh, other different types of vendors because this would be more structural. Uh, it wouldn't be a ground uh, mounted kind of thing. I'm trying to think of the name of it, Tracy. It wasn't that long ago that Greater Gratia came, I think it was Pace through economic development. Uh, the USDA building in Ithaca has got a regular solar farm, if you will, several solar panels that power that whole building. I'm the trying Pace to remember. Program. The PACE program is actually what I was referring to when I indicated yeah. that it provides certain economic assistance and incentives for buildings right. to, for businesses to uh, uh, make these modifications, make these changes. That's precisely what I was referring to. I think we've had yeah. one, maybe two businesses that have taken advantage of that, but it's here. And again, mm -hmm. it's a, another. So uh, for this piece, you know, perhaps we could say, um, uh, further explore opportunities for solar energy in that. Well, I look at it as realistically, the county is coming to the end of what I call the windmill era. We're not going to have any more big windmill farms. That's just not going to happen. Uh, basically, the energy companies have told us that. So we have to look at different opportunities. And the next thing I look at is solar energy. What can we do and how, and how can we promote it? Um, you know, and we have to obviously work with large landowners and things like that, but I just want to make sure that this county is ready when that time comes and, and be able to help promote that. I have a question. How long does the solar, um, solar last compared to the wind turbines? Like the wind turbines are 20 years. How long is the solar? I don't know. Again, we, we haven't done this kind of exploration and the goal and objective doesn't um, commit us to any particular project. Well, it, you know, we can spend our time going out and getting that kind of information. But the solar panels out at the wind farm, I think that we were, um, oh gosh, I think we were looking at 20 plus years, but don't take that to the bank. Okay, well, it's just a discussion. Also under uh, economic development, we should be continuing to uh, uh, support expanding ma manufacturing, you know, be as, as production is being moved back to the USA, which is what I see coming. So we should and then, and in there too. In greater Gratia, we well, was really informed on that. I think, I think a, a commission that is solidly behind them economic development is can't hurt because people trust me when, when companies and industry is looking at an area to expand or build they look at all these things how friendly is the government to, to business are you capable of being able to handle business i mean there's all sorts of questionnaires but the big one is how's those board of commissioners treat business and it's very important uh that that uh, and you're right, Chuck, we have to continue building our economic base. Uh, we've seen the numbers, we've seen the pie charts. 70% of our business is agriculture in this county. It is, I mean, let's face it, but we're, we're always open. I mean, we got another 300 and some acres sitting out here just for instance, and just outside of town here that needs to be utilized yet for the ag business and things like that. So we're always open for it. Uh, economic, uh, grassroots economic development is always feeling, fielding calls for things like that. So uh, I think our, our role is to really support in, in that case. Okay, next. All right. Go ahead, Chris. Are we on the D2 then, the CARES Act, Commissioner? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, so this last week, um, we had some deadlines come up for some grants through the state of Michigan, federal funds that were passed through the state of Michigan that had to be submitted very quickly. Um, the first grant that I've highlighted here, I had not brought this information to the board yet, but through communication with the chair and with the administrator, 
um, due to the time sensitive uh, nature of this, we, we determined that we would submit this grant to the state to see if it would be accepted and then bring it to the board. And if the board was unhappy with that, uh, we could contact the state and cancel our application. Um, I'm gonna start by explaining what this first grant is. Um, and you'll remember the CARES Act is part of the uh, Corona, you know, I didn't write out what it was, but it was in response to the emergency declaration for COVID. And it is the first responders hazard pay premium program. I just refer to it as hazard pay. Um, and what that is, is they pay up to a thousand, the, the feds will pay up to a thousand dollars for there's three types of workers that Gratiot County has that would qualify for that. A, a law enforcement officer, a corrections officer, and a 911 uh, dispatcher. Um, this grant, there's $300 million available to the entire state of Michigan at all uh, local levels of municipalities. So we're talking from counties all the way down to individual um, like fire departments. <clears throat> It was also a first come, first serve. Um, so that means if we wanted to apply for to have hazard pay paid for by the feds for our officers and for dispatchers, we had to get it in before some of the much larger um, employment bases, such as you know Oakland counties or or some of the larger counties and cities applied for this. So what we did is we submitted for each of our corrections, law enforcement officers and 911 dispatchers for a $1,000 hazard pay. Um, this has to be paid out by the county before September 30th. So it's on our books this year. Then the state will reimburse us with the federal money no later than November 14th. What we did is for a full-time employee, we, um, allotted a full thousand dollars in hazard pay. If they were a part-time employee, what we did was average their weekly hours since the beginning of the declaration until last week when we submitted this to figure out what percentage of an FTE they are. So if they worked half time, we applied for a $500 hazard pay. Um, and what, I, what we will need to do eventually to make this official, if that is what the board would like to do, is to have a budget amendment to pay these people out of the budget. Um, but at this point in time, I'm looking for your immediate feedback at this moment, if this is something that the board is happy with and we're going to go forward with and, and pursue, even though it has been submitted. Question. Does submission, Chris, even though, uh, does it mean we'll receive it? I would reach out to um, the state, the Department of Treasury, and ask them to resend our application. Because- That wasn't the question. No, 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 I was my that question. wasn't the question. The question was, by, by submitting it, does it mean we'll receive it? Yes, we submitted it within a couple days of it becoming available. I am very confident that, like I said, it's first come, first serve, email time stamped. Um, so I'm very confident, 99.9% .9 sure that we will get this money. So Chris, do we need to pay the money before we get it? Yes, we do. Her and lies the rub. <laughs> You didn't tell me that. <laughs> the um, <laughs> the payment no. date that we put on the application, I believe, was August 11th. This is federal money, though, right? That is correct. No, I trust the feds. I wouldn't trust the state. I'll trust the feds. I don't need the feds. Now, if you'd like to... certainly. If have deserved it, right? What? Anyway, the pe oh, people have deserved it anyway. I have no question, Chuck. These guys went over above and beyond the call of duty here. So do we have a, a bottom line on that? I think there was. $53,830. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, Chris, let me ask you this. For the one tenth of one percent that we did, if we wouldn't get it, can we handle it? Before the payout date, we should get a notification that it will, um, that we will get reimbursement for it. But should we not uh, get that notification and do pay it out? Yes, we do have the cash flow or the, the cash balance to be able to cover that without okay. being reimbursed. All right. Um, no, that so that's, I'm just trying to make sound financial decisions here. And then I would, I would also submit that directly to FEMA for 75% reimbursement um, in, in a future grant application that I'm going to submit. If we don't get reimbursed through the state. So you got something you could back it up with 75% is what you're saying? Correct. Okay, does anybody else got any questions before we move on? We'll take this up in uh, open session. Okay. What else we got? Oh, the second grant that I submitted was um, through the CARES Act again, provided by the state of Michigan as a flow through from the feds public safety and public health payroll reimbursement program. Just real quick, what we did is we submitted a, for reimbursement for the EOCs, the emergency operating centers, officers, time that he spent out there. And we also submitted for 50% of the administrator's time that was spent mm -hmm. during the months of April and May mm -hmm. um, for, work uh, on um, this COVID prevention and safety for our community. Um, the total we asked for reimbursement for that is $18,137. They're gonna open up a second period for June and July shortly. So we will be submitting um, an additional salary reimbursement now. There's one more, I, I mentioned the, the FEMA grant. I have not submitted for reimbursement for that because we still have costs that are coming in that we're looking to get reimbursed for. And those costs are for materials such as PPE. Everything we just went over was salary related only. The PPE has to go directly to um, the feds at FEMA. And we're gonna be looking to submit about $90,000 in costs to them, of which we're hoping to get 75% back. So that is basically a, is a summary of where we stand with this declaration of emergency grants available and what we are going to be applying for and what we have applied for. And that, would, con that would conclude what I have to present for the board for the finance meeting this evening. Okay. Do you have any questions before we go back? Oh, I got to ask public comments, but do we have any questions before we go into public comments? Okay. At this time, do we have any public comments on the finance meeting? I don't think we will, but I just want to ask. All right. Ask that we adjourn and go back to the full board meeting. So moved. Or discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. So we're back into the regular meeting. A couple of things to take care of. Now that we're back, um, we got a. We will uh, ask that uh, we approve the signatures or signatures gee, expenses. Signatures on my mind because I was looking at them. Um, expenses for uh, the month. So I need a motion. Some would support. Home support would pay the expenditures all, or approve the expenditures. All in favor, signal for saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, 
we need to vote on the uh, CARES Act. Uh, we'll take that one first. So I need a motion to support that. You need a motion or support? Well, we need a motion to support. I'll so move. I'm support. I'll support it. Move support Gather discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, and the last part would be the uh, asking for EOC reimbursement and administrative reimbursement for the COVID experience. That's a 75% of the PPE. Yeah, it's at 75. I'll move that. Move, we have a support. Support. Move and support. Any other questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the polls. Motion carried. Very good. Well, it was it was interesting. It was fun. Heard it sometime. Okay. All right. Anything else to come for the board? If not, adjourned.